Yo, what is up everybody? Jumping here, and today I'm going to continue my Let's Play the Mass Effect Trilogy. In the last episode, we went ahead and um, did Miranda's loyalty mission, which was pretty cool. Um, now, I'm going to actually recruit Thing, and then we can get off this planet for now. I'll come back here later to do Liara's la uh, Lair of the Shadow Broker, probably after the Collector Ship. But let's go ahead and talk to the Slave Broker. It's okay, I'll think of something. You said Synthetic Insights would buy me. You said it was an easy sale. I assumed they would want an AI tech. Hello, can I help you with something? I need you to let that slave go, now. We prefer the term indentured servant, and I know that Batarian slavers have made humans understandably prejudiced against slavery. Before you do anything hasty, know that this Quarian signed the agreement voluntarily, and her servitude contract is completely legal on Ilium. If you actually want to help the Quarian, convince the Synthetic Insights representative to purchase her contract. What if I bought her myself? I could let her go and everyone would be happy. A gallant offer with three problems. First, her technical skill merits a contract of several hundred thousand credits. There is also a fee for freeing me before my service period ends. Exactly. And finally, you are clearly a traveler. Her service contract requires that she remain on Ilium. I don't want them to take me off to a mine somewhere. Why did this Quarian sign herself into slavery? I tried to play the stock market. I'm good with numbers, and I thought I had a way to make unlimited money. I lost everything. Then I got a credit line and lost that. Then I took out an illegal loan. You get the picture. As part of our agreement, I paid off her debts. Five years from now, she'll have a fresh start and excellent work references. Sounds great. Unless you lose her paperwork or come up with a reason to hold her longer. All contracts are monitored by Ilium Law Enforcement. In a case such as you described, the burden of proof would be on me. No system is perfect, but safeguards are set up to protect all parties. If slavery is legal, then why are you trying to sell the quarry? I don't keep service contracts myself. I'm a contract broker. I assumed Synthetic Insights would jump at the chance for a skilled AI tech, but they won't even make me an offer. Why not just keep her? You said she had technical skills. Quarian's strict health requirements and diets make them expensive to house and feed. I run at a minor profit at best. I don't have the money for constant suit repairs and clean room facilities. So, what happens if Synthetic Insights won't take me? A solution always presents itself. I will take care of you. So slavery is legal on Ilium? Indentured servitude lasts a set amount of time or until agreed upon conditions are met. Ilium must approve all contracts. The law limits what restraint or corrective options I can use and what tasks I can legally assign her. I'm also legally responsible for her behavior and health. Abuse is absolutely forbidden. I'll talk to the Synthetic Insights rep and see what I can do. Really? Thank you. I'd appreciate that. Okay. So, we get to uh, talk a little bit about slavery. Cool. Uh, now, they have uh, indentured servitude on uh, servitude on Ilium, and that is a form of slavery. Um... If you guys don't know this, I'll give you a little history lesson. The first form of slavery that was in the United States was actually indentured servitude. That was the original slavery. And what that was way back in the day is that to help with crops and, you know, different farming and other things, people would actually become indentured servants. So what would happen is is that may, primarily they wanted a way to get to the United States or get to the New World back then. So people would pay their fee to travel from like England to the United States and then they had a contract of indentured servitude to pay off the debts of the travel fees and all that for a certain amount of time and then I think like after the contract was up then they would get some type of property um, given to them by their owner or something like that. So it was a form of slavery that was it does have real history here because it was like before there was like African American slaves there was actually white slaves in the United States. So that's a little history lesson for you guys if you guys didn't know about that. But uh, primarily these were all just, you know, English people that would, well, be indentured servants to other English American people back in the day. Alright, let's talk to this person. Can I help you with something? 
How would you like to get your hands on an expert quarry and AI programmer? If you'd like to submit a resume, I... Wait. Is this that slave? Synthetic Insights has no interest in purchasing slave labor. We're under enough scrutiny from the Citadel without engaging in practices the Council disapproves of. To be frank, we're hardly hiring anyone. The Geth attack on the Citadel didn't engender much love for artificial intelligence. It sounds like Synthetic Insights is worried about its reputation. Hiring this quarian would help. Buying a slave helps our reputation. How exactly do you figure? Purchase the contract, minus the fee for early emancipation, then free the quarian and garnish wages for reimbursement. Interesting. We look good for hiring a quarian, and we can say that we freed slaves out of the goodness of our hearts. All right, I'll run up a contract. The board might wet its pants, but we could use the good publicity. This quarian had better be good, though. It's always nice to help people out. Especially poor quarians who are slaves. Alright. Synthetic Insights just sent over the contract. I cannot thank you enough. I'm happy to help. Here, for your trouble. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll get this service contract transferred. Thank you. I'll stay out of trouble this time. Alright, so, um, to get that to appear, by the way, um, Normally what I like to do, that's one reason why I did do uh, Miranda's loyalty mission, is because if you have the Conrad Vern, um, Verner little thing, she won't appear, the slave broker thing won't appear. You have to first get, you know, finish that little storyline, and then once you're done with that, then you can go ahead and get the other, um, the slavery little storyline there. So... Uh, like I said, so the best thing to really do is to do Comrade Vern, uh, Verner's um, little thing, and then from there, you after you do Miranda's mission, and after Miranda's mission, she should appear, and you can do it like that. That's the way I like to go about it. All right, let's talk to this chick, and then we can go and do Thing's mission. Serena? Who wants to know? Name's Shepard. Liara Tassoni said you might have information on Thane Krios. Tana, cover for me. Over here. Yeah, I know who Thane Krios is. I might have passed him some information, but I didn't hire him. What do you want to know? Maybe you could help me find him? <laughs> I can tell you, but you won't stop him. When he contacted me, I checked up on him. The man never gives up on a job. I ran security for Nasana Dantius. Then I found out she was having people killed to cover up her dirty secrets. She fired me when I confronted her. Her loss. I might have been good enough to stop Thane from taking her down. If you work there, you must have an idea what his opposition will be. Eclipse Mercs. High-tech killer. Undisciplined, but very well equipped. They don't much care who they kill, as long as they're paid for it. Thane has quite a reception waiting for him. I told him all I knew. He didn't seem worried. Why does that name sound familiar? She was a representative on the Citadel a few years ago. Right. She had me kill her sister, the slaver. I thought that was just a rumor. Well, you know what she's capable of then. She has even more power here in Nos Astra. She uses it to keep her friends in check, and her enemies dead. So where do I find Thane? The Dantius Towers, penthouse level of Tower One. There's a second tower, still under construction. If Thane is smart, he'll go in from there. It doesn't sound like Nasana's just gonna let me in. She's as smart as she is paranoid. No one's getting in or out of there without a fight. I can get you in, but you'll only get one shot. You'd better be ready. Do you know anything else about Thane? Not much. He did say that he's not doing the hit for money. Nobody hired him. I wanted to know who I was helping, and he said he's doing this job on his own. That he had to restore the balance of his life. I don't know. Maybe he's crazy. If he takes down Asana, I don't care why he does it. You're just offering your help? No strings attached? You're going to look for Thane. Nasana's mercenaries will try to stop you. At the least, you'll distract her guards. Take a little fire, give Thane a clear shot. I didn't hire him to kill Nasana, but I won't shed any tears when she gets what's coming to her. Let's go, then. Good. I'm tired of this crap. We'll go tonight, as soon as the shift workers clear out of Tower 2.
Alrighty, so now we get to travel to the tower and try to locate uh, locate Thing. Um, you know, Thing is by far probably the coolest, in my opinion, probably the coolest person in Mass Effect 2. Uh, and talking to him is just, uh, it's so awesome. He's just so interesting and just uh, such a bro, you know what I mean? And even if, uh, I just I don't know I don't know how to explain it. He's just a cool ass guy they put in this game. I'm really happy they included him. And I love the drills just based off of him. Oh, finally I get to level that up. All right, so now I can get Inferno ammo. This shit is fucking crazy good, primarily because it does 60% um, more weapon damage, which is great. But it's the it's the burst radius three meters. So what that means is that with like a shotgun, if I hit an enemy. I will like do some serious damage to that first enemy and then the burst radius will actually catch on fire other enemies around that so it's like three meters radius obviously so if I shoot one enemy and there's an enemy next to it it's gonna catch on fire and potentially stun the enemy so it really does help with the vanguard alright let's go ahead and see I, I don't think I can level anything else up I really wanna get these as well but you know it's whatever slam I do not like slam as a power honestly all right, so let's go ahead and check out our weapons. Uh, I think everything's good to go. Now we have to watch this little scene of the car. And go on to the tower. The towers are heavily guarded, and you'll find more resistance closer to the penthouse. So, this assassin, you planning to stop him? I'm just here to make sure he survives. Hmm. Yeah, Ilium is definitely a cool place. Probably one of my favorites in the entire game. There they are, the Dantius Towers. You'll have to get up to the second tower and cross the bridge to the penthouse. Her mercs will fight you every step, but it's your best chance. We might find him before it goes that far. Maybe. At least you'll know where he's headed. Any last-minute tips about the towers? The Eclipse mercs will be well fortified by now, and they won't want to disappoint Nasana. There's no automated defenses or traps, just focus on anything moving. All right. Let's do this. Hold on. All righty, now it's time to kick some freaking ass. This is, uh, this is a pretty good mission. There's really not too many bad missions in Mass Effect, because there's only, there's two of them that are loyalty missions that have no combat. Now those are probably the most boring ones, honestly, but at the same time they're Don't very interesting. Be here to greet you soon enough. Good luck, Shepard. Yeah. So anyway, like I was saying, so the the two missions that don't even have combat in them, the loyalty missions, they're still actually interesting missions and have like good little storylines to them. It's just without the combat to back it up, it it is it, it can get a little repetitive when you have to do the mission over and over again, you know. Okay, so I'm gonna put my infernal ammo on. Now you have to shoot that glass. Um, you actually, you actually have to shoot the glass if you want to like charge through. You can't just use the power through it. Doesn't really work like that. So charge those mechs. All right. I hope I can give you. I know in this mission, some at some point I'll give you an example of what infernal ammo does. But it is awesome. All right. So over here is gonna be some medical supplies and uh, a hack we can do. So let's go ahead and check it out. Here we go. At this point, now we can go on over here. All right, so this chick, uh, Nasana, I think that's how you say her name. She's a uh, she's a little fucked up, and she was in Mass Effect One as well. Which you know what's interesting about that? I actually did not know that for a long time. I don't know how I didn't know that. Primarily, I think because the first like two characters I played when I played Mass Effect 2 I don't think I ever did that storyline which I did the storyline I just when I imported it, I didn't actually do the storyline that particular playthrough it's kinda confusing I'll explain it in a second let's talk to the Solarium war, uh, worker Help. still alive but unstable I can't feel my legs my chest is killing me who did this to you and why we're just night workers Nasana sent them after us she sent the mechs to round us up, but we didn't hear. They just started shooting. They just attacked you? Yes. They were too slow. It was horrible. Everyone screaming. The mechs said there was no time. Nasana wanted us out of the way. 
immediately. Then <coughs> the dogs <coughs> needs medical attention, Commander. Here. That should ease the pain and keep you alive until help arrives. Thank you. That helps. Take your time. I think I'm better. Find the other workers. Help them. I need to get up to the penthouse. Any suggestions? Take the service elevator to the upper floors. The bridge between the towers isn't finished, but if you're careful, watch out for the mercs. They're everywhere. Any idea how many mercs Nassan has got? A lot. Dozens of them are wandering around here all day. You'll find more the further up you go. Why would Nasana kill her own workers? To her, we're expendable. But I didn't realize she was that ruthless. My friends, co-workers, slaughtered. They were jumping off ledges to escape the dogs. I'll do what I can. Thank you. Let's get moving. Alrighty, so... Dad ass, buddy. That's one of those scenes where it's just like, Ooh, thank God I brought Miranda for me. Just to open the door. Anyway, like I was saying, so we're gonna have a, a ton of enemies in this upcoming room. Alright, let's take your ass out. Yeah, Inferno Ammo makes this shotgun too much better when it's already so freaking good on top of it. Backup I keep trying to hit the with this uh, gun and it's not working out for me very well if you can't tell. Anyway, so what I was saying earlier about the importing system in this game that I didn't like was I it wasn't really a big problem like you know oh man it's so stupid but it was definitely annoying uh, at times to be quite honest and the only reason why I say that is because one of the major problems I encountered the first time I played this game was that I didn't I didn't actually uh, understand exactly how they were gonna go about the system so I actually fucked up big time whoa like god what the hell <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck just happened there? I'm having some crazy shit happen to me on this playthrough. But anyway, like, here's my example of the importing system. Okay, I had six different characters for Mass Effect 1. One for each class. That's how many times I beat the game, basically. Now, I only had one level 60, which was like my soldier. And, well, I didn't really personally find a reason to beat the game on my level 60 when I played because literally uh, it's like so hard to get level 60 in Mass Effect 1 that uh, it's almost trolly in a way to be quite honest uh, and what I mean by that is like what they do to you is that like literally like you play the game like two to three times and then like on your final attempt you'll get the f uh, 59 and then you actually have to play the game one more time just to get level 60 now once I got level 60 in Mass Effect uh, 1 I mean I just didn't give a fuck anymore honestly I didn't I didn't want to beat the game all the way again because I I beat it like four or five times well probably like four times but you know what I mean? So, I didn't know that that was going to be a problem in this game. And it turns out, it was a big problem. Because if you don't beat the game in Mass Effect 1 on your level 60, it doesn't count. So, my soldier, my main, basically my main shepherd at the time, was a level 59, or was counted when I imported him as a level 59 bad guy. Now, he, I, I intended to be a good guy. But instead, I was kind of a bad guy. And I didn't do everything. I mean... I just didn't think of it, honestly. I just thought that, I don't know, I was pretty stupid. And on top of it, my ex-girlfriend at the time, uh, she stole a bunch of my games. I mean, every game I owned at, uh, around that time was kind of stolen from me because I left. I don't know how to explain it, but I used to, I had a, a ginormous game case. I'll pick this up now, it doesn't really matter. But I had this ginormous game case with all my games in it. And like when I broke, you know, when she moved out of my house, because she lived with me for like three years. Once she moved out of my house, she just kind of took it with her and stole it. And I didn't even really care, honestly. It was like whatever. But the one game that she took that pissed me off was Mass Effect. Ah, oh, man, that pissed me off when she took Mass Effect, the original. Because then I didn't, like, right before Mass Effect 2 came out, I was planning on going back and, like, you know, 
having everything ready for Mass Effect 2, that I was going to go do everything the, the right way, you know, whatever, complete every side mission. I just wasn't able to experience that. So, like, with this mission, I never was able to really make that connection. Because if you don't do that mission for Nasana in Mass Effect 1, they don't ever make the connection for you in Mass Effect 2. You kind of have to, like, piece it together in your own mind. So, like I said, it took me a long time to actually figure that out, so... A little little story for you guys about my history in Mass Effect. Alright, uh, yeah. But I do have a ton of different characters for this game. Um, I had, like I said, one for each class, and like three, three females, three males, or four males, actually, three females. Please, don't kill us. We'll go, we'll go. Hey, look, they're not Eclipse. You're here to help us, right? It's one reason I'm here. Come on out. It's safe enough. Thank you. We are in your debt. Maybe you can help me. I'm looking for someone, not a merc. He's on his own. Well, whoever sealed us in here... When he found us, I thought we were dead. But he just closed the door and locked us in. Assassin helping potential witnesses. Odd. Assassin? Here for Nasana, I bet. She's got it coming. You treat people like this, it always comes back to bite you in the ass. I need to get to Nasana's penthouse. What's the quickest way? Cargo elevator is the only way up right now. They're still working up top. Watch your step. Some of the walls aren't in, and it's a long way down. Cold, too. I hate working up there. Nasana's not exactly your favorite person? She's a hard woman to work for. That's an understatement. She works us long hours, no overtime, and this is what you get in payment. She's unpleasant, to say the least. Why not just quit? We would, if we could. What's stopping you? Our contract. We're stuck until the job's done. Quitting for any reason can be hazardous to your health. We hear that anyone who leaves early tends to disappear. Probably just a rumor. But who wants to find out for sure? Did you see the one who locked you in? Do you know where he might have gone? He's no Solarian, I can tell you that. But I've no idea where he went. Sorry. If he's after Nasana, he'll be heading to the upper levels. How many workers were in the tower? Are there many more of you? Not alive. We were lucky. Well, some got out before the dogs were sent in. Maybe a few are hiding somewhere. I wouldn't stay here too long. It should be safe down on the lower floors. I was just thinking the same thing. Let's go, everybody! Thank you. And tell your assassin to aim for her head. Because she doesn't have a heart. Get moving! So... That's a little thing, uh, a little bonus thing right there. That's, I would say some people might not know about that. Um, I didn't know about that. Maybe my first or second playthrough. Maybe like my third playthrough is when I started to piece everything together. That's one thing I absolutely love about Bioware games, though. I feel that you can replay a Bioware single-player game like Mass Effect 1 or Mass Effect 2. Maybe even Mass Effect 3. Probably Mass Effect 3. Nice Little Republic, Jade Empire, whatever it was. But when you replay it... You find new things that you didn't know about before, and it makes the experience all 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 uh, all better. I, I don't know that don't sound right, but that much better. That's what I'll say. I've got a feeling okay, so this is a little bit of a bitch. Empty. Um, you might want to move your people Not a little a bit problem. back and maybe pull out your heavy weapon for this. All right. So the reason why this is a bitch is that you're gonna have to fight two engineers and a crowman. So yeah. It is stupid, but all right. As you can tell, with the heavy weapon, it makes it a lot. You know, a lot of people don't actually use their heavy weapon, uh, and that's a shame. The heavy weapon is there for a reason. Every time there's a part where it could be a little tricky, like that part, um, bust out the heavy weapon. You have it for a reason. So, and the nuke's nice. And I know a lot of you guys might say, "Well, what about the nuke? The nuke is good." It's just that I prefer actually Don't weapons worry. that have more I ammo, like the arc projectile, personally, or even is. the particle beam is really good as well. All right, let me shut up. This Don't is a great moment. It. We don't need any reinforcements. I'll take care of it. It's under control. I'll go down there myself. Turn around very slowly. Tell me where the assassin is, and I might let you live. If I knew that, I wouldn't be wasting my time talking to you. You're not one of Nasana's mercs. 
Who are you? You've got two ways down. Express or coach. Your choice. Look, pal. Even if I knew where he was, I wouldn't tell you. Not the answer I was looking for. I've got nothing more to say to you. If you shoot me, my team's right through there. How about goodbye? <laughs> you have to do it that way. It's too funny. Now, there's a great video uh, you guys could look up if you haven't seen it. I could even put a link. I don't think I'm going to. I'm not going to. Uh, it's called a uh, Mass Effect series. It's from the same guy who made the videos for uh, what was uh, the indoctrination theory for Mass Effect uh, Three. I mean, he does some incredible, uh, incredible video editing. He also made another really great video called like uh, the Dark Knight of Omega, Garrus Vacated, or whatever. Uh, that's a fantastic video as well. Now, this particular video is like. It's one of the math defects that he does, which, uh, oh man, okay, I just got fucked up by a warp. But it's one of the mass defects ones, and it's like, uh, who wants to be a millionaire or something like that? And it makes fun of that part, and it's amazing. Alright, so if we come in here, there's gonna be some more solarians, so we're gonna have to bypass this door. Alright, where is it? Ah, there we go. Now this should be pretty simple. Alright, now we can talk to the Solarians once this door is open. Find out some more information. Are you guys alright in here? Get back! Get back! I'll shoot! Relax. We're here to help you. I don't want to hurt you, but I will. Hurt me? I hardly felt a thing. Tell on! Slow and easy. He's my brother. I just want to see if he's alright. Are you the ones who shot the Merc? It wasn't me. Your brother didn't do it? No. Talon was standing here with me. What happened exactly? The Merc found us and shouted at us to move. We, we panicked, and he shouted more. I thought he was going to kill us, then his head just exploded. Talon picked up the Merc's gun, but we were too afraid to leave. Then you showed up. That's very precise shooting. How safe is that bridge out there? The bridge is stable, but the wind's your real problem. If it doesn't throw you off, the mercs will definitely try. There's a lot of them out there. I'm looking for someone. Probably the guy who killed this merc. Talon thought he saw someone following us, but he's been a bit... on edge. I haven't seen anyone but the mercs. Is the bridge the only way to the penthouse and the other tower? From here, yeah. It won't be easy. Mercs are patrolling the other side. Whatever Nasana's hiding from must be pretty scary. There are still mercs up here. You should get to the lower levels. No need to convince me. Tell him. Come on, get up. Can we go home now? Yeah, we're getting out of here. Thank you. Alrighty, so... That's pretty interesting. Um, once again... Just punch him <laughs> because it's just too funny. You, I think you can, uh, if you don't punch him, you do get some good points because you get a persuade option. So that is something you can, you can consider doing, but I just, like I said before, I like to take all the renegade options like that. Why not? They're funny as hell. So, all right. If we go over here, this is some pretty awesome dialogue. Let's get the power cells. I'm afraid your men aren't able to respond, Nasana. Damn it! <laughs> Alright, so bust out our weapon and let's go kick some ass on this bridge. Uh, this part isn't too bad, honestly. Alright, charge the mech. Uh, warp and incinerate the bad guy. You're dead! Right, <laughs> Target! Now, you know, you can use this uh, bridge to your advantage. Just gotta watch out for these vanguards. <clears throat> I hate these fucking things. Can't talk. I think this is the only one? I thought there was two here. Yeah, I'm just tripping. Oh, no, there is two. There's another one over here. Charge her ass. Oh, I missed. 
Go. Boom. Some element zero right here. Um, like I said, you can restock your ammo like that. Anything else I'm missing? Now there's actually an, an upgrade over here. I actually no, it's not right here. Now there's a. I don't know if I can do it. There we go. Yeah, you can shoot that, or you can use like overload on the canisters, and you'll blow them up or whatever. Pretty useful. Um, let's try to keep that in mind. I couldn't get a, a target on the canisters. Honestly. All right, charge the mech. Like I said before, uh, that really does like disable the shit out of um, mechs. Like they're pretty much goners once once you do that. Watch out for these like commandos and captains and shit. They really are. Um, I won't say they're really tough, but they definitely are uh, not not the easiest to kill. Cool. All right. Now there's an upgrade over here. It's going to be a submachine gun. This might damage. be useful. I think that's the only upgrade you get. Now this right here is amazing. This is you don't want to fuck this up because this is the most money in any hack in the entire game right here. So you want to make sure you get this. Twelve thousand credits. Holy crap. That's enough to, um, practice. Well, actually, I guess it won't really buy you anything, but it, it, it's like, it's about half. Like, actually, I guess not that either, but most shit in this game is very expensive. Alright, so this bridge is a bitch. Um, but being a Vanguard makes it a little bit easier because you can knock everybody off. Which is nice. Like, watch, I'll knock her ass off. All right, or not? Critical system damage. Rerouting power. Requesting assistance. You know, obviously you could take the angle. Um, take whatever. Ooh, God, I got fucked up. You can take an angle or whatever to uh, help you knock the enemies off. If you like that. Now you gotta watch out though for these fucking um, auto turrets or whatever they are. Pretty much auto turrets. I think everything should be dead. If you get close enough, though, you don't have to worry. You don't actually have... A lot of people sit there and they'll shoot the turrets. You don't actually have to do that if you don't want to. Um, like I said... The, oh, I could have just let that thing fly off. You don't actually have to do that, though. Alright, don't hit me with the warp, please. Oh, crap. I think I just got hit by a turret. Alright. One more charge on her, she kill her. Die. Now we're gonna have the big enemy, uh, another commando. So let's focus on trying to take her out. Uh, I might use my arc projectile actually because she's pretty tough. And I totally missed that. Man, that sucks. Now remember, that will knock them down normally. Bust out the pistol. Obviously, this is the last enemy right here. Before we get to the boss. Well, not the boss, but the final room to end this mission. Okay, so we come in here. It's going to be a pretty epic cutscene. Let's go ahead and watch it. Shepard, but you're dead. I got better. And now you're here to kill me. You really are paranoid, aren't you? Don't patronize me, Shepard. Charming as ever. I'm sure you find this all very ironic. First you take care of my sister, and now you're here for me. Well, you made it this far. Now what? You really think I'm here to kill you? Do you have another reason for destroying my tower? Decimating my security? I'm just looking for someone. You expect me to believe that? Is it credits? Is that what you want? Just tell me your price. We can make this problem go away. All the credits in the world won't make this problem go away, Nasana. Who the hell gave you the right to play God? I may not be perfect, but look at you. We both kill people for money. What's the difference? You kill people because you think they're beneath you. They're in your way. I kill people when they leave me no choice. You've got a choice. You don't have to do this. I can tell you. What? I heard something. Damn it. Check the other entrances. You stay put. When I'm finished dealing with this nuisance, you and I are going to... Who?
not bad. I was hoping to talk to you. I apologize, but prayers for the wicked must not be forsaken. Do you really think she deserves it? Not for her. For me. The measure of an individual can be difficult to discern by actions alone. Take you, for instance. All this destruction, chaos. I was curious to see how far you'd go to find me. Well, here I am. How did you know I was coming at all? I didn't. Not until you marched in the front door and started shooting. Nasana had become paranoid. You saw the strength of her guard force. She believed one of her sisters would kill her. You were a valuable distraction. Let's cut to the chase. I need you for a mission. Indeed. You're familiar with the Collectors? By reputation. They're abducting entire human colonies. Freedom's Progress was their handiwork. I see. We're going after them. Attacking the Collectors would require passing through the Omega-4 Relay. No ship has ever returned from doing so. They told me it was impossible to get to Ilos, too. A fair point. You built a career on performing the impossible. This was to be my last job. I'm dying. Low survival odds don't concern me. The abduction of your colonists does. You're dying? Are you contagious? How long do you have? If you're interested, we can discuss it on your ship. The problem isn't contagious, and it won't affect my work. I hadn't heard that. Is there anything I can do? Giving me this opportunity is enough. The universe is a dark place. I'm trying to make it brighter before I die. Many innocents died today. I wasn't fast enough and they suffered. I must atone for that. I will work for you, Shepard. No charge. Alrighty, so just recruited thing. He's a badass, as you can tell from the little cutscene. God, he's epic. Um, and yeah, he's dying. It's kind of like one of those things. It's like, really, bro? Wow, I just met you, and you're dying. What the hell? It's a damn shame what they did. <sighs> I've heard impressive stories, Krios. Sounds like you'll be an asset to the team. That is, if you're comfortable having an assassin watch your back. I've accepted a contract. My arm is Shepard's. Uh-huh. Don't know about you, but I'm loyal to more than my next paycheck. Obviously he is, too. He's doing this mission gratis. What's your concern? I don't like mercenaries. An assassin is just a precise mercenary. An assassin is a weapon. A weapon doesn't choose to kill. The one who wields it does. Where shall I put my things? I'd prefer someplace dry if anything is available. The area near the life support plant on the crew deck tends to be slightly more arid than the rest of the ship. Ah, an AI. My thanks. He seems quite civil. We need all the help we can get. He's not what I expected in an assassin. He may surprise you. Yeah. And he may not. You know, Jacob gets a lot of moments in this room with Shepard when you recruit people. It's kind of kind of odd. You'd think it'd be Miranda since she's like second in command, but whatever. Alright guys, I hope you have enjoyed it. Please give me a like. Please give me a favorite. And I will see you guys next time.